as uh, he uh, kind of introduced us, just uh, briefly. So we, after I retired from IBM, we both served in Japan for last like about two years. And, uh, one is in Karizawa, one is in Tokyo. So also we are planning to go back to Japan uh, in this uh, late August to serve in Tokyo. In Mitaka, we are served with a mission agency called TEAM, the Evangelical Alliance Missions. And then, so what we are sharing today is more like our experience. So this is not any answer or anything, you know. So this is a kind of our experience and also what, why I say dialogue is we want to hear Learn from you all too. your experience as well. So that's the reason why, you know, whoever maybe, you know, Sato Sensei has a more like kind of a good uh, way to connect with Japanese people. Learn from each other. So that, that's done from each other. But I think it's really important as I pray, help, you know, just be equipped and prepared because first Peter, uh, you know, first Peter three fifteen is saying in English, I don't have to read in Japanese right now, but in your heart set apart Christ as a Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that we have. So, so, you know, so this is a word we need to be prepared. So, hold on. So, in our church, we have training because we take mission trips around the globe, and I'm sure Dunwoody does as well. We've got just church does as well, and we have learned a, a neat way of just introducing your own story with people in a short 15 second. 15 seconds, you can do it, so anybody can do it. And so we wanted to share this. Of course, you can make it longer, but um, it's been very helpful as a, just a way to engage someone with us with your story, your testimony, that you can go deeper later. But um, has everybody been able to share their own testimony, or have you ever tried to um, prepare your own testimony for sharing? Did anybody prepare your testimony? Or have you ever had an opportunity to share your testimony with others? Okay, good, hopefully good, everybody, good, good. that's good. <laughs> Just where we are. So, um, um, but then you know you want to concentrate on um, before knowing Christ, your turning point, and then after Christ. And so you might want to, so that's what you see on this chart right here. Yeah, so the point here is like, a, especially to Japanese people, make it very clear. But as you already know, maybe, already know, but some people, especially, we actually took, take a you know, mission team to Japan from a Baptist church and ask you know, our member to share the testimony to Japanese people. Many people is using like this. Oh, when I was in uh, elementary school, I actually attended the BBS. And then it's like a pastor has really challenged me. And then I feel like a God is really, you know, asked me to, you know, to have a faith. So I accept the Christ. So, so what, what Keishi's saying is, <laughs> we speak Christianese. You heard of that? Not Japanese. We speak Christianese. So we say things like, I accept, I, I ask Jesus in my heart. We, we, I grew up in the church. We use language that... Japanese would not know or understand because they don't have that cultural context of maybe even going to church. So you have to be sensitive of what words you might be using. So this um, little um, way of sharing your testimony, you want to go to the next one, gives you some um, ideas of uh, some hip, some tips. So you're not wanting to tell the whole your whole life story with that person. You want to keep it simple, and it's pointing basically to God's love and His forgiveness. Who knows how to? Our church told us that you can tell the gospel in ten words. Can, you, can anybody say that what the what the good news is in ten words? Anybody can try. You can try. Maybe you. Were I was lost, but now I'm found. Well, that's a good one. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> we were taught Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. That's the gospel in that's ten words. Gospel. 
Mine's my testimony, sorry. No, it's just... <laughs> so, so, sorry, just, uh, I wanted to have a, like, a, your email address if you want to have a PowerPoint. So Absolutely. you don't have to take a picture. Oh. Just write down the email address so I can send it to you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about scribbling it all down. Yes, write your name on that, we'll send it to you later. Yeah. Um, so, that way you can see there's a link up there if you want to have a video training from our church that teaches you you can do that it's like four minutes so we're not going to do that now but go on to the next one or is it up there? no the, um it basically these are some ideas you can and the longer you've walked with christ you probably have multiple stories and things you can connect what you're trying to do is find common ground with these people too with whoever you're engaging with so you may have different um ways of sharing depending on the person you're talking to, your encounter. So uh, I give you an example. Here are some adjectives. Um, you can look at that. But I'll just give you a sample of mine. So there was a time in my life when I was guilty and ashamed and uncertain about my future. But I found forgiveness in Jesus when I decided to trust in him and follow his ways. And since that time, I have found peace and a purpose in my life. Do you have a story like that? It's like uh, 17 seconds. Right? <laughs> so, so but I think a key point here is that this is a foundation of your testimony. Foundation. If you write a testimony, sometimes people write down a lot of your life story. When I was nine, I mean, you can go on and on. If you just want to just keep it simple, and then you can expand on it. Yeah, later. that's the core of your testimony. And then you, based on your core testimony, obviously you can add on, right? Because you are like, I feel guilty, why? That's your life story, right? So depend on the audience, or depend on who you engage, you really need to first listen what kind of person this person is, what is any struggle she has. Then you can maybe a little bit modify putting, adding your life story on that theme. You understand? So that's the really key. So my case is like, I'm a businessman. I am really pursuing my business. That's my life purpose. It was, right? But met with Christ, I, my purpose, my perspective totally changed, right? It's not money. So those kind of stuff, just stuff, Put the, your theme, testimony, structure, and then foundation, you build the foundation. And then this foundation can be a two or three or four. Actual your testimony. And then adding your life story on that. So, you want to add something? Oh, no, you want to give them a sample from yours? Uh, maybe next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, I mean, seriously, I think it's really prepared, you know, just preparing well. My case is like a, just uh, in English, I, I would say, when I work for IBM, I really pursue my business career. And my life purpose is getting money and getting rich and then become high um, position you know, at IBM. But I lost my both parents in a year. And then that, that's the time is really gave me opportunity to think about my life purpose. At that time, I met Jesus. He told me my life purpose is not money. And I totally understand my happiness that does not come from the money. And I followed Jesus and I found happiness. Because he told me what is my life, life purpose is. So that's kind of stuff. And then maybe people ask me, what is the life purpose now? Then let's study the Bible together, right? So those kind of stuff is really like, that's important. And then. Maybe I will share a little bit more, but is that okay? Okay, so um, there are lots of different tools, and I, probably this church has a certain tool. You've probably showed multiple tools, and <laughs> have you heard of any of these? Have you heard of the three circles? Have you ever used the three circles? You can actually Google these if you have not. Um, the bridge is obviously a one, and it's four spiritual laws. Um, VBS people use the salvation bracelet through colors. There's just multiple ways. You can do, if you're dealing with a child, ABCs, admit, believe, confess. 
Um, Creation to Christ is very good. It's a little bit more lengthy, but we've used that with Japanese. Um, and Casey loves the chemical cross. Has anybody ever heard of the chemical cross? That is a visual um, object lesson that displays what the gospel looks like using uh, a chemical cross. You can Google that too. There are, and then you can order the cross and do it yourself too. So there are, it's good for groups and especially good um, cross-culturally because it's visual. But I mean, I don't think you, it's not something you have in your pocket. But these, these... Actually, it's not true because I, my cell phone has a three circle, right? So when I take a picture, of it, you know, people look at me like, what is that, right? That is an intentional way to engage people. Then you can explain, what is this, right? Mm -hmm. so, so always intentional and prepare is, I think, is the two key words. So. <laughs> the three circles um, is designed so you could do it on a napkin. So you, could, you can Google it, a uh, YouTube video, and it teaches you how you can actually do it on, you know, just using it. So it's displaying, you know, just yeah. teaching it that way. So from, uh, you know, time-wise, we don't go through, but it's also important to, again, not only prepare, but also connect with your testimony. So gospel is not just gospel, just bring your testimony, putting it in, especially three circles. It's really well, can be well connected with your testimony. How you can change your life by Christ. So, so that's the kind of a, kind of a give you some clue and a hint and some idea to bring in here. So, is that anything? Well, what I wanted to show, we're going to share later, but we have um, on your, because you know, sometimes back in the day, we had all these. And I'm not against these. These are great to have tracks and stuff, but sometimes when you're out and about, you don't have that track you wanted to share with your friend. Well, we just learned recently, a friend who's with Crew, there's an app called God's Tools. And some of these, and it's in Japanese too, you can do it bilingual, and we're gonna, we'll show you, share that resource. But you can use your phone, this app on the phone, and you don't have to pull up the, um, the track you don't have in your purse or whatever, it's on your phone. So that's, really going to be helpful in the future. So that's, we're real excited about that. We are going to share some apps later. So that is a kind of a, give you some uh, tips for testimony and uh, gospel sharing. So those are two, any questions? Any questions? Otherwise we are keep moving on. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, in, in verses that you That's good, and it's also good um, connecting to your testimony um, to have a verse that you can share. Like when you said fear, I thought of one of my favorite verses: "Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not afraid, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my, my victorious right hand." That's been, uh, you know, a stronghold verse. So have those verses ready to share with whoever, depending on the topic. If it's fear, if it's anxiety, that's good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. I wanted to ask about the 15 second testimony. Have you seen it used for a work in progress? So Andrea, your example, I felt guilty, now I feel free. Mm -hmm. What if you're not quite there yet? You're on the way. I have mm -hmm. felt guilty, mm -hmm. I feel guilty, mm -hmm. but I'm learning mm -hmm. to feel free. Is that? Well, in my case, <laughs> And you know every story is a little different, but I it'll kind of segue to the next thing. Have you ever heard of the Japanese character Kiki? You mean the movie? The character no, movie? no, no, no. It's a character. It means crisis, and that's kind of like 
um, a turning point. And in Japanese, the character for crisis, there are two parts. And the first part of uh, kiki or crisis is danger. And the second part is opportunity. And it's kind of like our turning point. Sometimes we're faced with a crisis. And, and at least in my case, I, I go on to share maybe that character and I'll say, well, at this point, it was my opportunity to just entrust, to trust in God and Jesus, what he did for me on the cross. And, you know, that was an opportunity. It could have turned to danger had I chosen a different route. You know what I'm saying? So that's the two, it's a turning point moment. So I could have gone down a different road or a different choice and it would have led, led to danger and maybe more turmoil and problems. But, you know, I chose to trust in Christ and that was my opportunity and it's made all the difference, that kind of thing. Does that help? Yes, thank you. I think uh, as a testimony perspective, uh, I try to tend to um, sharing, uh, you know, once I met, accept the Christ, everything is become perfect. It's not true, right? So, yes, indeed, like changing, but it's everyone in the process. And it's so important to have a relationship with the Lord. So that perspective changes. That is a lady, I think, the key message you know, I usually share with Japanese people. So moving on to the uh, little bit uniqueness of Japanese people, maybe, yes, maybe most of the people do not use the Chinese character, but the reason why we are using this one is like, uh, so when we share the gospel, most of the Japanese people think, oh, that is American face, Westerners face. Even my brother still believe I am a, become a Christian because of my wife is. But it is not. Because this is, a, you know, the, the, what, the, God loves everyone, all nations. And also, interesting fact is there's a connection between the Bible and the Japanese. The Japanese culture, Japanese history. So that's the reason why I'm using, we are using some connection between they are using every day their character connecting to Bible. And this is a story I sh we shared our next door neighbor last uh, when, this, week. this week with the dinner. We invited them dinner and it was a Chinese couple and they used the same character and we explained this one. Their eye was like, oh my very God. Very natural, very natural. You know, so we don't really have to share like, uh, you know, any Bible like Talking about this character is really like open up their eyes. Mm -hmm. The same, uh, same for Japanese people. So this um, book, um, it says the discovery of Genesis, how the truths of Genesis were found hidden in the Chinese language. This is the book. You might want to Google it. We, um, I don't have any copies, but um, you, you might be able to get it on um, through Amazon. I'm not sure, but it's a wonderful book, and it it gives many. It's just a cool book, and. Um, so some of the characters are only Chinese, not they don't work for Japanese. But we've kind of we're picking out four. Just four will kind of be like planting seeds into a Japanese person's mind. So this I don't know how to say it in Chinese, but in Japanese the word for boat everybody may know is fune. And if you break down the characters, kind of like I broke down Kiki a minute ago, crisis. The when you break down boat, you've got a vessel and eight mouths. Well, think about what was the very first boat ever in the whole wide world. Noah's Ark. You got eight people, people there? Mr. and Mrs. Noah, and you got their sons and their daughters-in-law. So you got eight people on a vessel. So it, it kind of is like, the Chinese are like, wow. You know, they're, they're, our neighbors are like, whoa, that's kind of interesting. And yeah, even even we had a Chinese lady in our Bible study class one, at, at Johnson Ferry Baptist Church. She's Chinese, a believer, and we were sharing it with them in a Sunday school class, and she was like, oh my gosh, you know, they see it, but they don't see it. They, their eyes don't see it until it's kind of broken down, so it's kind of neat. Another one is creation, and skuru, and so you've got the word, you've got dust, and then you've got um, that little thing, is like a breath, and then you've got mouth, and then walking. So if you look at Genesis, I think the verse, what, chapter 2, verse 7, it's like God made them out of the dust and he breathed in their nostrils and they became a walking. It's like straight out of Genesis 2, 7. It's like, whoa, that's creation. It's just really cool. What's the next one? Oh, my favorite thing. This is my favorite character and it was also um, 
Billy Graham's wife, what was her name? Ruth. Ruth, Ruth Graham's um, favorite character. Actually, it's on her tombstone in wherever. Library. The library, the, yeah. Charles. Yeah, I don't think it's Charles in Raleigh or something. Charlotte, yeah. But um, it's Yi or Yoshi. And, and it, for me, it just looks like it's like the Passover lamb. You've got lamb, and then the, the kanji underneath it is me. And then within the me, you've got your hand and your spirit. I'm like, you killed the lamb. But it's underneath. Think of the blood of the lamb. And if you think, of, I always think of someone kneeling underneath the lamb. I mean, it's like the blood of the lamb covers me. I always think of the Passover lamb. We are, none of us are righteous, but by the blood of the lamb. And that just is such a perfect picture for me of, the, of why, this is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, right? So that is, that's my favorite character. And um, you can get into some deep stuff. But a lot of the um, lamb characters in... Um, like what's beautiful, big lamb. What uh, you know, kide is big lamb, right? It's cushy. Um, but there are a lot of different um, lamb stuff that point to our savior. Our beautiful savior was a big lamb. <laughs> yeah. And let's see, what is another one? Here's another one that has lamb in it. You've got its word for sama, like we call Yesu sama. You know, Mr. and Mrs. If formally you would say kasuya sama or kasuya sama, but sama is more formal, and then um, it also means our example. Who is our perfect example? Yesu sama. He, and you've got some um, parts of this character that points to what he did for us. There's a tree, Calvary's tree. You've got lamb. You've got eternal water, living water coming out of that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's profound. It's like a sermon right there in the character. <laughs> it's amazing. You can just spend hours just kind of going through the, the parts of the character. So we have found this to be cool ways of engaging with um, Japanese. So I, I, it's really a neat. Yeah, it's their own language. Many more, or Chinese too. Many more like a Bible story, like Eden, Garden oh, yeah. Eden, Eden. And then Adam and Eve ate a, we don't know, apple or something, right? Fruit, fruit. fruit right? Mm -hmm. And then what happened is they realized they are naked. So in Japanese character, hadaka is right side is saying fruit, and left hand side is saying the God. So it's clearly connected. You see, Lots it's kind of a lot of different character is really connecting to Genesis, Genesis or a Bible. So it's like amazing. And the people, I mean, this character, people in the leather head using every day, every day, every single letter has this character, <laughs> so, you know, to explain it, like, oh my gosh, like, what, what is this, you know, so really, I open. So, what I found is, like, sharing like this, it's kind of, uh, to be honest, you know, the Buddhism, they, they have a book, but only Buddhism monk can read it, only Buddhism uh, monk, even believer of the Buddhism, they don't read. They're just listening the preach from, from a Buddhist monk. No, weekly, just periodically, like a, two, three times a year. That's, the, that's the, what they do. Right? And the Shinto, there is no book. There's a story, Amaterasu o, o Mikani, the man-made god, made a Japanese island first in this world. Like, it's kind of weird, but People, I don't think they are really believe from the bottom of the heart, but the people like think, if talk about the Bible, people first think, oh, that is the man made. Somebody made it. So that's the kind of their, you know, think. So, no, 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 Bible is actually, it's not man made, God created, and then actually we are using part of the story in our daily life. So they are like, oh my gosh, we need to read the Bible, right? So people kind of more getting interest. So what's the Bible really saying? And another story, it's not really kanji, but in a, so talking about Adam and Eve. Eve um, ate the fruits, and then God cursed um, snake, and then what he, he said, for Eve, 
you basically screwed up, right? <laughs> and then, so I will give you birth pain. Pain in, in childbirth. You'll have, that was her, she was going to have to have pain in childbirth. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and then it's an interesting fact. You see other animal like horse and dog, no animal is screaming when they have a baby. Yeah, it's only the, the human. Only human being has, has a kurushi, kurushi pain, pain birth. That's a kind of interesting, like, whoa, God said that it's actually happening right now. <laughs> Already, it's happening. But, it's, but that's true. You know, at the animal kingdom, they're very peaceful having their... their you know, offspring. But anyway, on and off. So it's he went thing. off a rabbit trail. I don't know. Where it's Again, <laughs> I, I think the point is that we just, you know, tell them, right? It's, this is not argument. So we don't have to argue. Like, is this the Bible or man-made or not? But we can just drop those kind of a facts, you know. So I think that's important. Okay. This um, this is kind of interesting. Um, this is became. Very interesting to me, golly, in about 2008-ish, I was really interested in the Hebrew roots of my faith, and so I started going to a Messianic um, Jewish congregation to worship, and so I learned about kind of the, there are some Hebrew connect, ancient Israelite connections, um, to the Japanese, and so this you might want to investigate a little bit because uh, you know a lot of the ancient Japanese festival oh I know what it was because I started dancing with the Messianic um, congrega congregation and I was like this dancing reminds me of Bono Dori which is a Japanese kind of festival dancing and I'm like this is so Japanese to me and so um, so I just started digging deeper and and we just found some really cool connections between um, the ancient Israelites and the Japanese history. And there's a whole website and there's whole kinds of interesting stuff, but um, even like in Kyoto, there are some, you know, the Gion Matsuri. Um, some even Hebrew words are like Japanese words in the, in the festival um, stuff. Like you have heard of Omikoshi, that's the Japanese equivalent of like an ark that they carry on their shoulders. Well, in um, some of the Japanese festivals, they'll say, uh, what's the word? Washo, washo. So that means carry in Hebrew. It's, there's some interesting connections there. And um, like, you know, there's the, the shofar, but in Japan they don't have um, the, the rams, but they do shells. There's just, and they, they wear things on their heads. There's a lot of interesting connections, like even the layout of the shrine You've got the washing of the hands. If you've ever been to a shrine in Japan, they wash their hands. They've got the incense. There's a lot of interesting connections that actually can kind of make a, a Japanese person think. And it's interesting. In fact, even in Japan, there's a Japanese Roots and Torah Scroll study group that has developed. I mean, did you just hear what I said? <laughs> Toramaki? You've heard of Toramaki is scroll in Japanese. What is the Old Testament in Hebrew? Torah, Maki, did y'all hear that? There's a lot of cool stuff that you can connect, um, make people think, wow, this is interesting. Yeah, some people say that even, even tea ceremony is a form of communion, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, I think it's like a, God knows what is, you know, connection. I mean, many scholars and um, uh, historians is studying, and some people so some people saying it no, and there's some pastors no, 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 no. But I think uh, it's one of the eye-opening, like kanji, to, you know, telling, sharing like this uh, fact, or uh, you know, with the Japanese, they they actually really like start to listen and start to like getting interest. So. Yeah, there's like a camel on the Gion Matsuri. Mm -hmm. There's just there's some um, there were some TV shows in Japan that did some of these connections that were like, huh, why in the heck are there camels on the, the you know Japan, it, Japanese festival? Just and some they, stuff. Like Kyoto historical festival, one of the you know the biggest big three festival in Kyoto has a camel on uh, their the big, big flows. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so there's no camel in Japan. I mean. One is totally bizarre, but it's clearly some connection. So again, some that's, that's like one of the how to engage. Just putting that kind of a, you know stuff in your conversation will just like give them a like interest. Make them think. So it's all about you know. 
So another one is this is a poem. Maybe have you heard of Ameni Momatezu? Maybe now. Is anybody know this poem? So this poem is very, uh, very, very popular and famous in among the Japanese because uh, the book in elementary school has this poem, and they even like my uh, generation, we uh, need to memorize the whole this poem. The older people know more, I mean, they remember more, but younger, I think, generation still, they are studying this poem. And this is a poem, right side you can see uh, English translation, but written by Miyazawa Kenji, Kenji Miyazawa, very famous uh, compositor. And uh, so again, so many people know that. And the very important part of this poem is the very end. So he said, so Miyazawa Kenji, this guy said, this is my goal, the person I strive to become. So he is talking about someone. Someone is be very strong, right? Be not, not this defeated by land, not defeated by snow. And then he is, he is you can read it. Sounds like he's a really nice guy. Because if someone is sick, he goes and takes care. If someone is dying, he's, he's saying, give some more. Just giving them, don't worry. And then, but everybody's like, really, a bit, you know, just look down to him. But he's still the gracious and nice to others. So this compositor saying, ah, I want to be like him. I want to be like him. So interesting fact is that this um, poem has a model. So this actual person, this Miyazawa Kenji want to be his actual person was there. His name is uh, Saito Sojiro, Sojiro Saito. Um, maybe maybe I will put the name in uh, this PowerPoint so you can Google it. So Saito, Saito Sojiro is a Christian guy. So Miyazawa Kenji is not Christian. He's a Buddhist guy. Saito Sojiro is a Christian guy. And then he won't be like Christ Christian. He won't be like a Christ. That's his message. But not not many Japanese know this fact. Interesting. They remember, they're saying that, but they don't know the, the real story behind it. So when we, you know, I share like this, the people are like, oh my gosh. You know, it's just, you know, we want to be, because this poem actually, a lot of children are, oh, I want to be like him too. Right? I want to be like him too. So the message is here is like, I want to be like a Christ. And so, so this little bit story of this uh, Saito Sojiro, this dear person, he was born in a, a Buddhist, monk, Buddhist family. He was the third son of the Buddhist monk. But he met a very famous Christian guy, Uchimura Kanzo. He's a very famous guy. And he converted to Christian when he was around 20 years old, Saito-san. So what happened? He was actually born in a small town in the northern part of uh, Japan, it's Iwate Ken. So what happened after he converted? Many people interested in him. Wow, he's become a Christian. He baptized many people in front of many people. And then once he baptized and become a Christian, Japan is a persecution study. So people call him like Yaso Yaso. Oh, you are a Christian, you are a Christian. Start to persecute not only him and his family. So he needed to quit his, uh, he actually become a teacher, but he needed to quit to, you know, from the school. And then he, every, somebody broke his house. And the sad story is, you know, sad story is his daughter was killed. His daughter was somebody kicked by her friend. Bullied. Bring and died. But why, what he did, he didn't leave this uh, community. He stayed there. And what he did is he started to 
deliver the newspaper every day. And then not only that, he stopped every like a 20 meter or something, he prayed for his enemies. For his, enemies. Mm -hmm. his prayer it was like God will be done. God will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And how many years he has done it? 20 years he has done it. Can you believe it? So what's happening is, so all neighbors watched it, right? Whole village watched it. It's a small town. And the people were like, oh my gosh, what he's doing? He's not really doing any revenge. He's loving the neighbors. So he has a, like a candy in a pocket. If a kid is there, give, give candy to kids. If somebody's sick, he's taking care of the you know, neighbors. Because he understands what's going on because he's delivering a newspaper, right? So what's happening is, after 20 years, 20 years later, he actually moved to Tokyo to become a, like a deshi or disciple to the Uchimura Kanzo. So the day he left the village, guess what? What's happening is, more than 200 people gathered together to say thank you to him. And then one of, one of the, you know, these 200 people is the Miyazawa Kenji the person who made this poem. What a beautiful story. It's, you know? a, back story. it's a back story. But when we share like this, like people are like, oh my gosh, you know, this is the people didn't know. I and mean, they want to be like him, like, like Jesus. And then so he clearly obeyed his word, right? Matthew 5, 44 is saying, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So he did, he obeyed, he loved, he loved the you know, enemy 20 years. What a witness. It may be hard, it's easier, I guess, if you're Japanese to share with the Japanese because, you know, oh yeah, you learned that in school. You don't have that connection. So this, this is more geared for a Japanese to share with another Japanese. But, you know, you can still investigate the poem and. Plant a seed. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah. But it, it's pretty neat, especially for him, because you know, he grew up in school memorizing it, kind of like we learned the some, you know, MLK. Yeah, so it, yeah, you are right. So it's a little bit but they just give people like kind of idea, even like in English. I think people find out uh, like amazing. I, I'm going to send a link in my PowerPoint before sending it. There's a video talking about that in Japanese, everything in Japanese, but you can maybe share with a Japanese friend. Okay, next. <clears throat> What's next? Questions. Oh, yes. So, I mean, asking questions, I think that's the thing to remember when you're wanting to engage in a spiritual conversation is asking questions and listening more than talking so that you can look for common ground and ask deeper questions, right? And, um, and also ask for permission to share, you know, from your story or whatever. Um, why do we do that? Like it says up there, because Jesus used questions and stories to engage with people and, as well as Paul. And it does show respect uh, with whom you're engaging and it helps them to think deeper. And as Bruce said, shared earlier, it's so that we can ultimately point to the hope that we have found in Christ. Um, we haven't written down questions, but the little God tool that we have, we're going to share the app. There are some questions that you can gain, glean from that as well. It's, you don't even have to think of them. You can just you can pick a topic or a theme, and then there are some questions. But these are some good ones. Death is good. Talk about you know. <laughs> and then my experience is like so. I you know I, I was a businessman, so it's like a, engaging with uh, the guys. It's like a really intentional question. It's really useful. And, and especially like a job and what's the right purpose and then also family is really easy to connect to everyone so for instance I'm a father so when I talk to the another father hey um, do you know what is a real you know good father character and then what did you learn from your father to be a good father those questions people say I don't I have no idea. My father didn't tell me anything. That's the most of Japanese people say, right? 
But clearly, Bible is telling us what kind of father should be. So I am involved in a family ministry and doing a father's seminar. So those kind of intentional question is really gives them like, huh, time to think, right? And so next time you, when you see it, oh, by the way, you know, father's role is not just like making money to bring up, you know, money for life, for the family. Father's role is also spiritual leader. Then you can, you know, keep going the discussion, right? Father's role, father's role is also like emotional leader. Father's role, role is like a physical, like a role. So, so those kind of a question, you, you know, be better to think, and then especially you are connecting your testimony, and be prepared. prepared. So that's the point we want to bring. And so, of course, a woman can't talk about the father's role. So, <laughs> you know, it's whatever your your passions up, you know, according to who you're talking to and and what y'all are. Yeah. So we wanted to share with you these apps. Um, Maybe, does it have, have any of you, are you familiar with any of these? Or is this all new? You've heard of which one? Uh, God's You've got the God's Tools? Good. Are you using it? Do you like it? Yes. So I, I would recommend everybody to go to the App Store and download that so you'll have your own tracks ready to go. <laughs> and you'll find just a wealth of information on the God Tools. Um, maybe I can, can you pull it up from here? Yes, uh, cannot really prove up everything, but so just a sample. Like this, uh, the four spiritual roles explaining this, like a uh, gospel tool, and uh, also. It should have it in Japanese as well. Yes, and then most of them, not all of them, they do in Japanese as well. So what's the the cool of this two? I cannot really share, but. There's an option you can link with your friend cell phone right away. It's so, like up in the upper right hand corner, there's like a, a three way thing. You can either send it, you can be on in sync. It's kind of cool. You, so, syncing to, with your friend cell phone. So, if you sync it, you can change the view. His view is also changed. Oh, really? Yeah. It's so, like it's like a sy synchronized. What you looking? So it's really so easy they to would use. have to download the app first. Why don't we ah. all do that right now? Are y'all okay? If y'all have your phone, why don't we try it? And just so that, you know, just so you can. So do you, do you have to download the app first? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go to the app store and get a download. Do you have a God like tools? A wi Fi here? Do you have a Wi Fi? Or you don't? Wi Fi. So it's DBW downloading. Yeah. It's on the piano. So go to the. Yeah, Apple Store or whatever, and then download God. God's tool. It's a little blue, like it shows. I think in this day and age, it's really a valuable tool to have on your phone. Are we having success? Yeah. So once you download it, you just open the app. And then I think uh, you can uh, select the language on the uh, option on the left top. Is the app with the whisper to law? Uh, there's a lot of options. So you can, we can open the whole spiritual law. G-O-D-T-O-O-L-S. Yes, God, So Japanese is a little bit limited. There's not everything in Japanese, but it, it, I mean, it's a start. It's better than nothing. You know, if you wanted to share with someone, they even have an emoji one that you don't even have to have any kind of language. You can do it with a child. How are you feeling? You know, what? Pick these. You know, pictures. It's just a, a really neat. There's a wealth of. Um, information there that you can use and you can surf it or whatever you'd call it. But it's and not God's kind of, tool, it's called God tools. You have a God tools. Hmm?
kind of running out of time, but <laughs> just uh, so you don't have to download right now, but that is one of the God questions. This is a lot of uh, question about the faith and the Bible and stuff. This is also written in Japanese and in English, so that's another one we take the command. Can I ask a question? Yes. Well, I don't want to be too forward since this is a second level conference and second level has first level. Yeah. Firstlevel.org. That's yeah. right. It's for the, all the contents are there with animation as well as there's books Yes. Um, and you That's don't right. have to install the app, it works like an app yeah. without even downloading anything. Thank you. Just brand new, hot off the press. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So Thank that you. one is also good. Well, I'm sorry we didn't include that one. That's right. <laughs> Forgive us. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's made for Japanese. By yeah. yours truly, yes. Well, yeah. By Japanese. So. Yeah. That's perfect, yes. Yeah. So I will put that, that one first. Before sending it out. As a useful application. Sorry. Make a note on that one. Basically. And then also, again, I'm going to send out some useful homepage. Again, I, I, I can put up many, but I just put in some useful uh, homepage for you guys. Are there any questions or any thoughts from your own experience that you found that maybe are good cultural bridges to the Japanese? We'd love to hear. Like engaging. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, Stand up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I find that talking about uh, marriage, you know, like, oh, like, how did you get married and what was it like? and was in a church, like, it's an easy way to talk about the gospel. So I was talking to a Japanese person about their marriage and, oh, like, how was that? Where was it at? And uh, they're talking about, like, oh, like, you know, the church and what they wear and, uh, you know, the, uh, the rings and all that stuff. So uh, I think many Japanese have Western-style weddings. So it depends on the person. But, yeah, like, a lot of uh, symbols can be talked about. Uh, such as like, what does marriage mean? Like, like oh, like you know, it's a, you know, uh, in a church, like it's Christian. So you know, uh, I explain to them, oh, this is what the Bible says about marriage, and uh, you know, then uh, I think some even like baptize their children. They do so talk about baptism, and uh, marriage is actually a story of God's love for His church. So it's a great way to use something that's very common and uh, yeah, that people know about to explain. What it is on in the Seisho, the Bible, you know, this is what it's about. And then, you know, many are like, oh, that's interesting. I, I didn't know about that. And then they're left wondering, uh, like, oh, I want to learn more about, like, uh, what it is in the Bible. Like, what does the Bible say about this? And then, you know, it can challenge their thinking in that way. So, that's it. Thank you. Any other? We're the bride of Christ, right? Exactly, yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 This is a very fascinating uh, opportunity to listen to the, all the uh, tools and uh, uh, how we can connect. And one thing coming to my mind is uh, probably another factor would be the listening. Uh, make them make their heart kind of, you know, first of all, you know, then let them talk. It's there, Japanese people are relatively very quiet. You have to wait, have to take time to listen to them. But usually after that, after they talk everything, the next step is they will ask you spontaneously, naturally, will you share your story? Then that is a kind of, in my experience, that uh, kind of very effective way. Because, you know, they have to listen to your story. The, that is a politeness, a cultural sensitivity. And uh, they, they, they have a lot of stories in their heart they want to share, but you have to just take time. Yeah. To, yeah. That, that, that's uh, another probably factor. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. 
when um, he shared that, it made me think of, have you ever heard of, of ukiyo-e, um, the woodblock printing? It takes many different prints to make the picture come to full bloom, I guess. And I think we have to, it takes many encounters with maybe many different people over many years for a Japanese maybe to come to um, saving knowledge of Jesus. It, you know, so we, it may not be our first impression. We just, like he said, we have to be patient and it will take many impressions over time. That's the way effective evangelism in Japan, Japan happens with Japanese, you know. If they don't, you know, it's just being patient and maybe it's not our encounter, but we're part of the printing process. <laughs> I guess that's right. Yeah. Yeah, boldness, boldness is important, but that's a listening is so important. Sorry. So her question is like, so Japan is like a basically um, family, you know, ancestors is uh, in a Buddhism uh, grave, right? Is the ancestors in uh, Buddhism grave, and family as grave. as family grave, as well as uh, you know, usually it's first son's house has a altar, altar, family altar, family altar. So it's not just like uh, your parents, but it's like several generations. You know, family tree is in the altar or grave. So question, her question is like, so some people, you know. Japanese people came to the U.S. It's easier to share because their heart is more open, and then you know many people interested they have a faith in Christ. But most you know most of them asking a question: What can we do with those family? You know, family. What you call, call it? The inheritance of uh, Buddhism. Well, ancestry. Yeah, worship. ancestry worship, and then those. Uh, what shall we do? Can we? Do we? How can we deal with it, right? Family and sisters actually. Can we cut it off? No, usually cannot. So so that's the kind of a hard struggle. What is the best answer? So maybe Sato Sensei can answer. But my take was yes. Uh, luckily, I am a second son. So my uh, older son took over. So I'm, I'm not really responsible for that. But I also hear many people saying the exact same. Not only your family, but also when you go to the funeral, what do you, do? you know, what do you do? Like, how much do we can really do? Can, can we, but for respect of your friend or family, and the, I don't think it's a good idea not going to any funeral. You should go, right? Mm -hmm. So how much, what do we should do? So I talked to uh, several people, and they, so what I'm doing is go attend funeral, and they go to some uh, Buddhism ceremony for ancestors, 